Louise Bedford here, your host of the Mind Over Market segment. And I am joined by none other than Jordan Mallard. Jordan Mallard, thanks for joining me today as my co-host. Pleasure, pleasure as always. <laughs> now, you did say something provocative before <laughs> we got and hit the record. Do tell me about your views. Jordan strongly feels that trading is gambling. Go for it. Yep. Tell me why. Uh, I think we bet on a matter of probability uh, and we carry risk. That is the very definition of gambling. Um, I, I think people have a negative monotone to the word gambling, that when they hear gambling, they feel loser. Um, but the definition of gambling is betting on probabilities and that is exactly what we do in trading. Uh, so I think a, a lot of people ignore the fact and in doing so they ignore the risk and the very real problems that can arise if you're not doing this properly so do you think that traders get lucky when they're winning no uh i, I don't i think it's not always an element of luck uh a, a good analogy of this for example is if you've got a strategy that's proven a 75 percent win rate you're going to bet on that next time the opportunity comes up with the idea that there's a 75 percent chance you win uh state of origins on at the moment 75 percent of the time the team that wins game one wins the whole series so if i'm to bet on queensland winning the series with a 75% probability based on previous results, I'm doing the same thing, right? But when I'm doing it in the sports, it's gambling. But when I'm trading, I'm not. I think it's a, a bit interesting. I think luck plays a part, yes. Uh, but thinking that there is, this isn't gambling, I think it's a dangerous, dangerous place to be. Well, this is exactly what I want to explore today, the role of luck as a trader. Now, I asked Chat GPT because, of course, mm. this is our oracle, our modern day oracle. But what are some of yeah. the challenges faced by traders today? And I actually was quite interested that I thought, yes, it is something that <laughs> I probably agree with market volatility and uncertainty, information overload cognitive biases, technological disruptions, economic and political instability, sustainable investing and ethical considerations. Now, I didn't mind that list from ChatGPT. I don't know, Jordan, um, is that something that you've asked ChatGPT before? <laughs> But <laughs> trading. <laughs> this is. I've, I've had a lovely conversation with ChatGPT about trading recently. It was great. <laughs> yeah, I've not. Not. Uh, I agree with some. I think. Uh, I think some of them could be seen as as opportunities rather than challenges. Um, in particular, the economical and political instability. I think provides a lot of opportunity, not necessarily a challenge, depending on how you look at it. Uh, but uh, the list overall, it's actually it's actually pretty good. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good too, actually. Now, let me describe to you a situation. In 2004, a single mother won a $10.5 million Ontario lottery. Her name was Candy Adams. So over the next five years, she bought cars, she went on trips. She had a lovely, lovely time. It really did give her a fun few years. But then after five years, there was no more money and they gave her her old job back. And unfortunately, she had to move into a rental because all of the money was gone and she forgot that there wasn't more money coming in. Now, Candace's story teaches us something very pertinent about mindset. It is not the money that you earn, it's how you are a steward of that money. And also, if you haven't earned it, then you're less likely to take responsibility for it. So are some traders just born lucky? What do you think is the role of luck and how do you get lucky? Now, I know that a lot of the concepts that Jordan and I are talking about are to do with how can you get yourself more lucky? You're trying to win in the markets. How do you stack the odds in your favor? And as Jordan says, with a game of probability, you might not be able to influence that exact probability, but you can do things that impact yourself in order to achieve a good outcome. I've got a study for you, Jordan. I think you'll like this one. It's about the role of luck. 
Now, this is led by Richard Wiseman. Now, he looked at the role of luck and whether people self-describe themselves as lucky and what impact is that on their life. Now, it is such an interesting area to research. So what he did is he got people, and this was a large study, there were 400 people in this study. He got people who considered themselves lucky and also a group that considered themselves unlucky and gave them a task. And that task was to look through a newspaper and add up the number of photographs in that newspaper. Now, he was judging them on speed, but also on accuracy. Now, yeah. who do you think was faster, Jordan, the lucky people or the unlucky people? Just as a guess. Uh, I'm gonna go with the lucky people. Mm. And who is more accurate? The lucky or the unlucky? The unlucky. Ah, okay, so you're splitting your bet. I see what you did there, my friend. Now, interestingly, the lucky people were the fastest and the most accurate, and it's not for the reasons that you think. Mm. In the third photo, it actually said down the bottom, stop counting now because there are 43 photos in the newspaper. So those people in the lucky group noticed that with incredible regularity. So they stopped counting, they got the right number, and they just sat back and looked at the others all stressing out. It's like, you know, when you think you've finished the exam, but actually the person beside you knows something that you don't know. Yes. Mm. So <laughs> this is quite interesting because luck is a matter in this example of perception and evaluating details. That evaluation of details is the key here. The lucky people were very good at looking for the things that could help them get ahead. They had honed their mind, honed their vision to the point where they were looking for shortcuts that they knew that could help them. Now, I'm putting to you that this could happen in the markets as well. Do you love that experiment, Jordan? I'll do. I do. I like it. It's smart. And, and yeah. it also shows kind of like a positive and negative mindset as well. I know we've touched on that plenty of times, but I can see that also playing a part in looking through those photos. Yes, yes. And the other thing that it has as a, a little bit of an overture is the unlucky people were so fixated on counting that they overlooked crucial details. They experienced decision fatigue. It was so much content that they couldn't see the specifics that they were actually going to be helped by. You can't see the wood for the trees or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. do think that that is something as well. So how do we get lucky? How do we improve ourselves? One of the things is to look at our locus of control. Now, we have touched on this, but I'd like to spend more time on, on this particular topic. We inherently, as a part of who we are, lean towards either an internal or an external locus of control. An internal locus of control is where we believe that we can make things happen. We think the reason for our success as well as our failure is because of us. So things like, I can determine my future. My passion and hard work help me achieve my goals. I am in control of my life and its direction. It's very active. Contrast this to an external locus of control. There is nothing I can do about my future. Why bother trying? Whatever is meant to happen will happen. I'll go with the flow. Luck, fate and religion control my future and it's a very passive stance. Now, it is interesting because this is a continuum and it is something that at different phases of our life we can feel differently. A lot of children, because they're used to having the rules made for them, it is an external locus of control because that's where they're at in their life. But as we mature, in theory, and fingers crossed, we become more of an internal locus of control person. We think we're responsible for ourselves. And for example, those lucky people, they felt they were responsible for themselves and they found something based on their skills that has identified the answer to that 
particular issue of finding photos in the newspaper. So Jordan, have you, I think you're very high on internal locus of control. Is this something that you've generally had from childhood? Uh, I think so. Uh, it's not something I've consciously kind of gone, hey, I'm going to do that now. Uh, so, so I would lean towards it just being my, maybe the outlook that my parents have passed down and, and the way that I was raised. Or, um, but, but yeah, I, I have always looked uh, more or tried to in a more positive light uh, and, and in a more... Um, improvement uh, i guess that's part of the perfectionist as well right mm, where i look in there yeah. oh, there's always there's always something more to get there's always something uh that can help improve so uh, i don't think it's something i've consciously gone hey i'm going to do this now i do think it's probably something that i've been raised with now it is interesting as well that those with an external locus of control as traders, they tend to use newsletters. They tend to not think that they can make decisions for themselves. They tend to use fund managers. They look at things that aren't within their own scope of being able to master and they look outward. However, interestingly, there was one study that said they're less likely to quit as a trader. Now, this astounded me because I have always tried to foster I am responsible regardless type of concept. But mm -hmm. in the markets, if you're making loss after loss after loss and you really believe that you are completely responsible, that is a problem because that is why these people are more likely to quit. They go, well, no matter what I do, I'm not making, I'm making a mozza of this. I'm not, I'm not making good decisions. So it must be my fault. So this is why I'm saying it's important that we consider ourselves on a continuum and we can borrow from different sections to help us. Sometimes you are going to be out of sync with the market. Sometimes no matter what you do, you cannot buy for love or money a winning trade. It can be something that is within you, but sometimes it can be something outside of you as well. So Jordan, you would have hit a loss streak from time to time, wouldn't you? Like absolutely i'm guessing yes <laughs> yeah yeah that's a good guess it's a good guess but no i think most traders do yeah um mm. I, I get it uh especially i tend to be quite hard on myself uh i know you do as well uh mm. i know you kind of have that trait too um so there definitely is that element of of blame but i guess that's where that positivity comes in right of looking okay yes i'm in the wrong but what could i have done better and that's kind of what's kept me in it it's because it's constantly okay let's learn from this this is a lesson and then implement uh but i feel like if i was just copying punches left right and center i probably would have quit years ago Yes, yes. And I think that this is something that this show is so good at exposing is that this is normal. Like so many people as traders, they think, oh, it's abnormal. I can't possibly, you know, be related to by other people because I'm just a freak. Whatever your self-talk is around feeling isolated and separate from the group, that is actually what we're here to say. No, it is normal. You will get a string of losses. It's how you handle it that counts. You will be out of sync with the market from time to time. And it is something that you do not have within your control to always be perfect. So let's talk about luck versus skill. I think this is something that a lot of people need need to consider how do we get to the point where we can develop our skills so that we can get more lucky so Jordan I'm about to tell you how to get lucky maybe that should be the headline I think we've got our headline I think Louise we're gonna, tells I think we're Jordan a new audience. <laughs> <laughs> Louise tells Jordan how to get lucky okay so the first thing I'd like to raise is to be aware of the concept of target lock. Now, target lock is a military term. I interviewed Wiz Buckley on another show, Talking Trading, which is my podcast. Wiz Buckley has had 44 active missions as a fighter pilot. And we talked about this concept and how it affects traders. So target lock is where I did it. Actually, I did this. I'll give you an exact example. I was following this white car, right? And it had this orange sticker on its bumper bar. 
and I got fixated on the orange sticker and I smacked into the back of the car. I got target lock. I almost drowned out all peripheral vision. I was just staring at this one thing in traffic without blinking and then bang, I hit it. Okay, so Wiz says this is one of the things when he's coming in to land on one of those aircraft carriers that mm -hmm. you have to move your head around. You don't just stick looking in the one spot, move your head around to stop target lock. Now this happens with traders as well. If you look at a heat map, there's a way, I, I don't have the ability to do it, but there is a way to do a heat map of eye contact on a screen. And there is one study that suggests that the traders that do well don't just look at the current price action, they move their eyes around the screen in order to avoid target lock. They're taking in a broader peripheral vision so that anything that they've got as unconscious competence can be brought forward. So target lock. Now, the other thing that I consider is that when you've closed out a trade, examine that trade for multiple angles. So you're looking to see what could I have done well? What would I do differently? And what are the precursors to that trade going gangbusters or flopping? So you are being broad. Daniel Kahneman, the behavioral finance expert, who recently passed away, he calls it where you are looking at quick thinking and long thinking. He, he calls it a way of being able to assess the topic at hand from different angles so that you can get the best result. So he calls it fast and slow thinking as well, where you're immediately making a decision, but then also you're giving yourself time to consider that decision. So it's coming from a few different angles here, I guess. That's what we're talking about to avoid target mm -hmm. lock. Have you firstly come up with that term before in your past, Jordan? And secondly, have you noticed that sometimes as a trader that it can be very easy to fixate? Fixation, yes. Uh, noticed it previously, no. Uh, I've never, mm. I've never thought about it or or realised that. Oh, don't get me wrong. I've caught myself miles away before staring into the abyss, um, <laughs> especially in trading. But uh, but to be like self aware that that was making an implementation, an imp I'm not going to get the word out. Uh, but Implementable. To, to <laughs> Yeah, to impact yes. my trading. Uh, no, no, I, I haven't. Uh, I haven't been consciously aware of it. Yes. Okay. Well, this is interesting. So it would be interesting to see over time now that I've raised this as a concept, mm -hmm. how you feel about that. Because sometimes we don't know that we've done something until hey, we examine it in retrospect. Now, another way to become more lucky, Jordan gets even more lucky, is to get fully present. <laughs> so the more you are present in the moment and not distracted, the more likely you are to see signals that other people have missed. Now, this is a concept known as deep work by Cal Newport. For those of you that are following along and need a good book recommendation, that book is fantastic. Now, ironically, I have tried to approach him to get him on this show. He is uncontactable uncontactable. He's not on social media. He doesn't respond to emails. You can't get a telephone number. I tried to contact him through his university and they said he doesn't do shows. Now, I find that fascinating. He's blocked himself off from society so that he can do his own deep work. <laughs> Ironic, isn't it? We'd like to know mm. more about that though from him. So this is where you are totally involved, hopefully in a flow state. You're not getting thrown around by distractions, and it's a demanding task just on the edge of your ability. Now, that is where trading's sweet spot tends to be for the exceptional traders. You are so involved, you are not distracted, and you are at one with the markets. Now, I've had a few times in my life, I mean, I know I've been trading for 30 years, but I've had just a few times where it's like nothing else exists. It is just me in the market and I'm just surfing on waves of charts. It has just been miraculous and I've tried to get back to it time and time again. The main thing that fouls me up with this is noise. So you may have a different sweet spot with this, but for me, as soon as there's any sound, 
It's like I'd break concentration. So becoming one with the market. Now getting fully present, Jordan, how do you do that for yourself? Just before I segue into that, I, I, are you one of the people that has to turn the radio off when you're reversing because you can't see? <laughs> if it's if there's lots of <laughs> oncoming traffic, yes. I'm, I'm a, a really good reverse parker. Like I'm a crazy good, like if, if there was a reverse parking Olympics, I think I would be gold medal worthy. I'm freaky good. But if there's oncoming traffic, yes, I do find that to be a stressful thing. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Getting in the, uh, actually, uh, to be honest, I like music to get me in into the zone. I feel like when I, I, if I can put headphones or earphones in, it blocks out everything else. Like I've accepted and funny enough, I, um, the, over the past kind of 12 months, I experimented with virtual reality uh, in the workspace. So I would hook it up to my computer, put myself in a virtual world and have my monitors everywhere and I'd be in that space. And that for deep work was incredible. No distractions. I'll, I'd be floating around in space in virtual reality with seven monitors I can move wherever I want with my hands and it like that was fantastic because it just completely removed everything and i could only focus on what i was doing and they do like pomodoro exercises and stuff in there it's it it truly is so that's one good way a recommendation uh if you need some deep work done getting in virtual Oof. reality is, is actually a really impressive way to do it that's fantastic actually on a similar but different note is float tanks i find a float tank amazing so a float tank is where it's a sensory deprivation unit you are in there with you can't even tell the difference between where your skin ends and the warm water begins you are floating because it's heavily salted and mm. they've got you in like a pod with the lid down and you can get out at any time so for those of you that are claustrophobic but that i find to be absolutely refreshing it's fantastic so whatever you need to do to get fully in the moment and to make sure you keep your peripheral vision wide so that you avoid target lock that will increase your chances of getting lucky and the final one is to create opportunities now Weissman's research in this particular topic says that individuals create their own luck they talk to more people they generate energy in particular directions they take control of their environment they cut themselves off from people that are going to drag them down and who are negative they network efficiently with a purpose so not mindless small talk and not just self-serving networking either they have developed wide social support groups so that if they need to know somebody down the track in five years who's good at this bang they've got somebody on the tip of their tongue that i think is something that is fascinating as well the psychological resilience of being able to establish your base wide is really positively impacted so this is luck this is this is what we're talking about it's being able to determine what you want spread your net wide make sure that you are doing deep work so that you are focused but at the same time avoiding getting fixated in summary Yes. Mm -hmm. Love so it. let's have a look at some of the other things that we can do from an internal locus of control situation. Now, luck and internal locus of control, it's, it's fascinating. The two go hand in hand because the people with high internal locus of control generally consider themselves more lucky. Now, setting clear goals, reflecting on outcomes, and educating yourself. Let's start with those three. So setting clear goals as a trader, this is with a caveat. These are general things that we can do to increase locus of control, but the caveat with setting clear goals is that we don't wanna make a certain amount of money. It's counterintuitive, but as a trader, the, the more we've got that specific monetary goal ahead of us, the less likely we are to achieve it. I had years ago, when I had a real job, way back when, I had a goal of earning enough to create a purchase. 
Now, I'll tell you what the purchase was. It was really, really weird. It was a super high quality, high class TV table made out of X aeroplane pieces. <laughs> It was wow, thousands okay. of dollars. It was yeah. very specific. If you want to look it up, it's Moto is the, the company that makes them. And they do amazing things out of old aeroplanes and, and Air Bowling. Force things. Yeah, yeah, it's just so, so novel. So I worked and worked and worked towards this particular level that I felt that I needed to achieve in the markets to get this particular TV table. And I fell short year and year and year. I fell short. And then I forgot about the goal because then all of a sudden I had other things going on and I'd become a full-time trader and I tucked it away and I read through one of my journals and there was that goal. And I had way overcome that trading level that I needed to get to. That target lock of trying to get to that level blocked me. But then when I opened up and I just aimed to become a good trader, that was a better goal. So it's a strange thing. So Jordan, I don't know, we've never discussed this, but do you suggest that people aim for a certain monetary amount when they're trading or do you prefer a different type of goal? Uh, I prefer a performance based goal. Uh, in trading, you can do everything right and not make money sometimes. Uh, that's just the way the markets work. So anytime someone comes through and they said, hey, I want to make $35,000 this year, I want to make $450,000 this year. Um, I would always recommend like that's a great goal. Yes, you're trading to make money. Let's not kid ourselves. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a result of the effort you put in. That's uh, who knows whether or not the market's going to print for you in that standard. So I always recommend they set the goals based on their performance, based on their routine, based on everything that they can do, learning, improving, growing statistics of their performance and how well they take their setups rather than whether or not the market prints for them. Yeah, I completely agree. And then the final two with developing an internal locus of control is staying positive and developing a routine. Now, we have covered quite a few different areas on the show to do with developing routines. But Jordan, I don't think I've ever specifically asked you, what is your trading routine? It's an interesting one, actually. Uh, of recent, it's been less day trading and, and more some, some longer term stuff. Uh, so the routine has been adjusting the essay. Uh, but I spend about an hour researching topics straight up. So it fits into my day routine. Uh, I'll be up around 6 a.m., take dog out coffee stuff like that before i start i like to start work at 9 a.m to trade delicious stuff at 9 a.m so the hours before that will be my deep like let's have a look at pricing let's have a look at my open positions do i still think these are valid and and going through the routine there prior to getting into my work day so uh my trading routine as per se is very very uh, I want to say joined with my day routine. It's uh, it's a whole process, and I've just started using uh, Motion. Uh, that plans out my day for me now, and it's all in there. And I tick off the list as I go through the day, and that's that's the the first thing on my day is to to be analysing positions. That's fantastic. So the key is for everybody listening, you can develop your own luck. You can keep your net wide, you can develop that routine, and you can develop the skills required in order to put yourself in the right place at the right time. This is something that you have control over, and it is definitely something when it comes to learning what works, you can implement. So this is where I feel, Jordan, there are so many things on this channel that can make a difference for people. If you are going to suggest somebody starting out looking at this channel, where would you suggest they start just as a quick tip? To starting to, to just experience to look trade at the channel. or, or yeah. to, uh, join on one of the live streams uh, absolutely uh, it's a it's a live room you get to chat to the experts we do four to five hours of content per day uh, you can jump in there you can listen to us you can chat with the experts whether it be louise and i whether it be our equities guys whether it be our futures guys crypto guys or even our fx guys we've got a whole range uh, of people with a whole range of backgrounds and a whole range of insights and you get unlimited access completely for free uh, so 100 percent my recommendation will be jump in a live stream, join us for a trading day and, uh, and watch how we do it. 
So if you want to develop your own set of good luck, that sounds like ideal, ideal ways to progress there. Jordan, any parting words? Yeah, uh, I, I want to just touch on uh, luck. I don't think you get a choice in, but you can definitely put yourself to where you can absorb more of it. Ooh, nice. Good way to end. Great way to land the plane. So tune in to all of the previous Mind Over Markets. If you haven't managed to watch them all in a row, do a lifelong binge with this because there is deep dive room here to improve your skills and, of course, increase your luck. Thanks, Jordan. Cheers.